Recorded live. Greetings, Husker Nation. Once again, it's time for an episode of the, of the Huskers Game Day podcast. This is episode four, hosted by the Williams brothers, Jeff and Derek, the co-founders of HuskersGameDay.com. We had the Nebraska spring game yesterday, and if we had a choice of any guest in Husker Nation to join us on the podcast, my brother and I put together a list. Number one was Dr. Tom Osborne. Number two was Coach Bo Pelini. And number three is the guest we actually have on the phone right now, uh, Mr. Steve Stipple, the, uh, the, the main writer for the Lincoln Journal Star covering Nebraska. Steve, thank you so much, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Derek and Jeff. It's an honor to be on with you. <laughs> the honor is all mine, my friend. Yeah. The honor is all ours. <laughs> Listen, Steve's got 20 minutes to, to break down the spring game. Uh, we weren't there, obviously. My brother's in Philadelphia, and, and uh, I'm here in Arizona. We were just hoping you could just paint a picture for us, Steve, a little bit. We read the article today about what happened. Um, and if we could start on the offensive side of the ball, just from the stats and, and from what you – the second quarter, it sounded like Zach Lee really started to come into his zone. I was wondering if you could just elaborate on his performance a little bit yesterday. Well, I thought that he – sure. He, he was polished. I mean, he's really got a presence. He really has a confidence. He was not at all – he was undaunted, you know, by the scene. And it's it's like a – it's a big-time scene now. I mean, it's just – there were 77,670 people. Yeah. So – and it was really his first time playing in an atmosphere like that. And, you know, he, he, he acted like he was in the backyard. He was fine. He's a very competitive – player um and, and you know sean watson said that after the game and you know the the other thing that you have to point out that he he, he was very accurate he was 15 for 18 passing the football um and really i thought made good decisions with the ball but travis washington with travis washington uh uh you said he looked he looked pretty impressive too he was 13 for 21 how would you characterize most of his incompletions? I, he's known for throwing that super fast ball where they drops. Was he inaccurate? Was it uh, um, maybe checking down and going to a different receiver? How, what were most of his incompletions about? Well, I mean, he had a guy, for instance, he had a guy pretty wide open in the corner of the end zone and really overshot him by about 10 yards. Um, and he's just a little inaccurate right, inaccurate right now um, with his passing. He, he was so excited. Um, and that's probably one of the – going forward, that will be one of the key things, the key areas where he's going to need to improve is just to calm down. Um, he's a very excitable kid. He still kind of has a defensive mentality. Um, he's got he's to be calm calm and poised um, and be kind of in the, in the vortex of that storm. You guys are familiar enough with football. You know how it gets. I mean, it can get – it, it just gets very crazy out there, and the quarterback's got to be the calm person, and uh, LaTravis will do that. But I'll tell you something about LaTravis, and and it surprised me. He looks like a quarterback. Um, he gets the guys to – I mean, he has he has the acumen of a quarterback, other than what I just said. He looks like a leader. He, uh, you know, they've really pared down the playbook for him, but he handles that part of it well. I, I tell you what, I, I'm a lot more confident in that position, mainly because of, of his kind of emergence this spring. He's taken a lot of – he's got a long, long way to go, like Bo Pelini said, but he took a big step forward this spring. Is there any – is there – looking at the quarterbacks, is Zach Lee going to be named the starter now, or is Bo going to wait uh, a little bit longer and make that call? Jeff, I mean, Bo has really come out and – said that, you know, that it's basically Zach's job. I mean, and Sean Watson has said the same thing. In fact, he, Sean told me on Friday that, look, Zach's main competition is me, referring to himself. Sean said, I'm the guy that's going to have to push him. Zach's just so much further ahead in the system. Um, the other the other guys that played Saturday, Cody Green, the true freshman, and LaTravis, are really just on basically chapter one of the mm-hmm. playbook. Um, now, 
Zach has been in the system much longer. He's been here since January of of oh seven. And he okay, number one, he's 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 far he's farther along in part because he's pretty smart. I mean he's from a football background and he picks up things pretty quickly and he studies very hard. I mean he's like much like Joe Gans, he's always up there, always up there in the coach's offices study and now the other quarterbacks are doing that too um, um taking the lead from him but he has progressed very well in terms of um he can do the whole he can run the whole thing and that's a big advantage yeah what's his speed like because uh, we hear uh from you know reports that one of the things that stands out is his speed uh is his speed something that could uh, the nebraska is going to utilize in their game plan no question. You didn't see it yesterday, and it's hard to it's hard to get a gauge on it anyway when he's in a green jersey. Um, but you know, yeah, I, I mean, I saw Pelini let the media watch one full practice this year, and he he scooted out of there one time and was out was running with you know he was out running linebackers um, and running with with uh, DBs. He's got he has very very good speed. I'd say he's a little quicker than. A little quicker and a little faster than Joe Gans. Um, they will definitely benefit from that, not only on broken plays, but zone read type plays and option plays. He's capable. He can really scoop. Nice. Is he 6'2"? Because I, I hear that he's listed at 6'2", but that's not his, his real height. It's more like 6'4". Six, <laughs> six <foot Yeah>. or... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. If people ask, I wonder about that sometimes. He uh, he doesn't look 6'2 to me, to be quite Frank, but you know he's kind of a blockier build, so maybe it's a little deceptive. But he's, you know, he's definitely over six foot. I don't think size is an issue, but no, I'd be shocked if he were six two. Wow. Well, At least what was the atmosphere? I'm curious. Like on third and long, Steve, on a third and fifteen play, does the stadium cheer for the defense, or is it just your natural <laughs> gut instinct to always root for points and root for the offense? Or did you know that they create that sort of uh, caustic environment there? Oh, I don't no, I, it wasn't costing. I'd say I'd say that you know, fans, I know the here, fans were so into it they're like, We're really gonna simulate the game atmosphere to get these boys ready, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I never nobody's ever asked me that. Now I would say it part partially I don't know because I'm sitting in a, a very antiseptic press box where you can hardly hear the crowd, but the Right. It, it's it, it is. It's very enclosed and there's no you know, some of the some of the press boxes are open air. But I would say that Nebraska fans are extremely intelligent fans and they go to the game you know, not they go to the spring game not to cheer for either team, but to really zone in on position battles and watch for players that they're curious about. So it's a little different kind of atmosphere. How about Roy Helu Jr.? How excited should we get about this guy? I mean, everyone's heard he's put on muscle and, and still got quicker. Is he going to be the next great Nebraska eye back like that guy, like an Amon Green, a Mike Rozier, Roger Craig type of guy? And Or does Quentin Castillo have the ability to be that guy as well? Because he had that, such a strong Gator Bowl. I think two of his longest runs of the year were uh, were in that game. That. I mean, Husker fans are just, you know, we're frothing at the mouth thinking about the potential of this guy. How excited should we get, and what's this guy's ceiling? Well, I'll tell you two things. The first thing, I go back to, I'll go back to last spring, where, if you recall, going into, going into spring ball last year, Roy Hallou wasn't, you know, he wasn't really on anybody's radar.